Welcome back to the Fast Forward Sailing YouTube channel. If you're new here, we create regular videos on the latest sailing news, covering everything from Sail GP to the America's Cup to Olympic sailing. So if you're into that, then consider subscribing. And if you're already subscribed, if you could quickly just tap the thumbs up button below, that basically helps this video reach more people and helps me keep creating content like this. So with that said, let's get into the video. The big news story this week is that Emirates Team New Zealand reject the Auckland bid for the 37th America's Cup. So just a bit of background here. Team New Zealand have won the last two America's Cups and it's tradition for the winner of the last America's Cup to choose the venue for the next America's Cup. And usually they would choose a home venue, although that's not always been the case. With the Swiss team choosing to host the 2007 and 2010 America's Cups in Valencia, Spain. And Oracle Team USA choosing to host the 2017 America's Cup in Bermuda. So it's not unheard of for the winner of an America's Cup to host it elsewhere. But it's still traditional and perhaps expected for the winner to host it on home turf. However, as we see here, Team New Zealand have rejected its home government's offer to host a match defending its trophy in Auckland, New Zealand. And we'll now look at options offshore. Now this isn't confirmation that they won't host it in New Zealand. The New Zealand government have offered to host it and we'll go into the details of that later. But basically the New Zealand government's bid wasn't good enough and that's prompted New Zealand to go and look at alternative venues. So scrolling down the article here, some background. Uh, Team New Zealand have been negotiating with the New Zealand authorities on mounting another defence in the nation's largest city. Team New Zealand boss Grant Dalton said in the statement, by all means, the end of the exclusive negotiation period does not eliminate all possibility of the event or an event being hosted in New Zealand. If resources enable another event in New Zealand, we will remain open to it. But we must explore other opportunities to ensure we can put up another successful defence. Now to me that just sounds like the New Zealand government haven't offered Team New Zealand enough money uh, to host the next event. The New Zealand government have pledged 99 million New Zealand dollars, that's 71 million US dollars, in cash and in kind support for Team New Zealand to defend the trophy in Auckland. They'd already spent 250 million New Zealand dollars for the 2021 match. So there's quite a disparity between the money offered uh, last time round and this time round. But I expect that's because much of the infrastructure has already been built for the last America's Cup and can be kept in place for the next America's Cup. So 99 million New Zealand dollars seems like a roughly fair figure. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, especially if you're from New Zealand. Do you think that's enough money to put on a successful America's Cup? Or do you think that Team New Zealand are being greedy? This is a statement from New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. She told local radio that our view is that we want it to be hosted here. We've put our best foot forward, but there's also limits to what we can do. Because, you know, this is taxpayer funding ultimately, so it's got to always be a benefit to New Zealand. Now, on the face of it, that seems to make a lot of sense. I'd be interested to hear if any of you have any stats on the amount of revenue hosting an America's Cup brings in. So would the 99 million of New Zealand dollar taxpayer money be recouped by a successful event? Ultimately, like most things, it seems like this comes down to money. And on the face of it, that sounds wrong, but we wouldn't necessarily want an event run without enough funding. Uh, that wouldn't be good for anyone not least Team New Zealand's reputation. Uh, going on to another article here, we got a statement from Grant Dalton. He says, we must explore other opportunities to ensure we can put up another successful defence. No matter where in the world we are, we will always be Team New Zealand. Our priority has always been to keep and defend the America's Cup successfully. We certainly want to explore holding a regatta in Auckland and along with discussing the venue for AC37 with other nations, would like to work through that opportunity also. And that does seem to make a lot of sense. They've still got the option to come back to Auckland if there's no other really good bids, but they've opened themselves to looking elsewhere. And who knows, there might be a really great bid which is good for everyone involved. Right, going on in the article, here's what Aaron Young has to say. He's the uh, Commodore of the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron, who are the yacht club behind Team New Zealand. So, 
he says, whilst we also remain hopeful that the cup can stay in New Zealand, it would be prudent to now explore other options as well, with a primary objective to ensure we can keep the America's Cup in the cabinet here at the club. As such, we also understand the need to help ensure the viability of Emirates Team New Zealand, so we have every opportunity to defend the cup again, wherever it may be. It would be an unprecedented achievement to win the America's Cup three times in a row, and taking the cup overseas may well offer the best chance for us to do so. So here it sounds as if uh, moving the cup abroad is essential for Team New Zealand to remain viable as a team. So it's not just about hosting a good event, it's about winning the cup. So presumably some of the funding from a successful bid will go to Team New Zealand, helping fund their campaign. Team New Zealand is perhaps unusual in the America's Cup world. It has long been backed by the public purse in New Zealand and immediately after winning the 36th America's Cup, received money from the government to ensure the team would not dissolve and see talent poached by other teams. And if you've got a long memory, you'll remember that happened almost 20 years ago now when Team Malingi poached Russell Coots and Brad Butterworth, leading to a bit of a dark ages for Team New Zealand. Interestingly, with that talent on board, Malingi went on to win the next two America's Cups. So why aren't the New Zealand government willing to put up more money this time round? Well, a likely possibility is the worldwide illness, I'll call it, that we've been afflicted with over the last year. This has made it economically harder. There may be some truth to that. If you're a New Zealander, how hard have you been hit by the pandemic? I know the cases haven't been high over there, but perhaps that's come at a cost. So what are Team New Zealand's top sailors, Pete Burling and Blair Chuke's thoughts on the matter? Let's take a watch of this interview with them. Let's start off then, uh, America's Cup. Thoughts, feelings, you don't, you don't want to go and say how do you? Well, I think first of all, have to say that we'd absolutely love the experience of defending the America's Cup here in March. It was uh, amazing for us competing, seeing the, you know, the Kiwi support. And I think for us and for everyone at Team New Zealand, that would be the, the first step to try and have it here. But the, the reality is it's a tough event to hold, and especially in these challenging times. So no, I know it's, it's taken a lot of hard work from the guys organising the event. And... Um, yeah, I think you sort of see where it's landing now, unfortunately. But, you know, for us, I think, um, you know, our focus over the last three months, we've been pretty busy so on this Olympic campaign, so that's really where our focus as sailors has been. I think for you, does it feel like a bit of a head versus heart thing? I mean, the scenes that we saw here were, were outstanding. Yeah, I think, you know, we love competing in New Zealand, and I don't think anyone in Team New Zealand would, would tell you anything different. You know, we really appreciate the support of the nation. You know, it's been a incredible journey um but yeah it's something that you've got to feel for for adults and, and the event and you know it is a pretty challenging time in the the, the world of, of sport at the moment you know COVID's really put a, a bit of a curveball in there and you know we've got to figure out um how, how to make it, it all work but so interesting interview there i think the interviewer summed it up quite well when he said it's a heart versus head decision i expect all of team new zealand would like to have hosted the event in new zealand if it was economically viable but it does sound as if this isn't the case and it's a necessity to look elsewhere. However, not everyone is happy with the decision to look elsewhere. On to the next article now. Uh, rumours have grown so loud that the cup may be hosted offshore that there is an apparent mutiny in the air with talk of some influential members of the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron, the yacht club behind Team New Zealand, weighing up a legal challenge to prevent that happening. They appear prepared to test the rule in the centuries-old paperwork of the America's Cup that says the cup belongs to the challenging club, not the team, as in the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron rather than Team New Zealand. Cloak and dagger drama is never far from the old mug and the cone of silence that has enveloped proceedings since the Kiwis defended the cup in mid-March has only heightened public tensions around where the next cycle will take place. Team New Zealand have been open about their need to protect their team and their intellectual property, which requires considerable funding given the billionaire benefactors they see their rivals across their bow enjoy. But without the team, which have more than proven their worth on comparatively tight budgets in this expensive game, there is no cup. They need to stay afloat in these toughest of financial times or risk what could be a terminal cap size. So all this leads us on to the question of where the next cup could be hosted. 
Well, there are several rumours flying around, so let's look at them and how realistic they are. This article is entitled, America's Cup, The Hosting Contenders. Now, top of the list when it comes to America's Cup host rumours are the British. They are the challenger of record this time round, uh, so they're helping Team New Zealand uh, come up with the rules for the next America's Cup, and in doing so, representing the other challengers. So it's only natural that if New Zealand aren't going to be hosting it, then the Brits would be. So this article reads that British lips are licking at the possibility of hosting the 37th America's Cup. Both mainstream media and yachting Pacific sites in the UK reported the chances of the Cup being staged on British waters came a step closer with this development. It's hard to argue against the Solent now being the favourite given Team New Zealand's partnership with Team UK and the financial clout of British billionaire Sir Jim Ratcliffe that comes with that. Initially, there was talk of a deed of gift match between just Ineos and Team New Zealand, uh, but talk of that seems to have cooled and there seems to have been an acceptance that there is a need for inclusiveness at this stage of the America's Cup rather than exclusivity. So it looks like the UK are top of the list when it comes to an alternative America's Cup location. This would be a big thing for the UK as the America's Cup originated in the UK in Queen Victoria's reign when an American team crossed the pond to the UK in a race around the Isle of Wight and beat several other British teams to lift the America's Cup for the first time. Cows on the Isle of Wight is also the base for Ineos Team UK so it would provide a significant home advantage for them and Cows and the Solent have a reputation worldwide for being a great sailing venue. So there would certainly be lots of positives there, uh, certainly for Ineos Team UK. I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts, whether you're British or not, on the America's Cup being held in the UK. Do you think it would be seen as the Brits buying the cup? Certainly it could be framed that way. Uh, they've got the billionaire backing, which is what Team New Zealand needs to successfully host and defend the next America's Cup. Personally, I'm in two minds about this. I'd love to see the America's Cup up here in Europe and in my home nation. I think that would be a good thing for the fan base of the America's Cup, so us in the Northern Hemisphere can experience these majestic AC-75s for ourselves. But part of me also thinks that uh, Bernanese set up Team Ineos to bring the Cup home, and if he doesn't do that by winning it, it's not quite the same. So, it looks like Team UK is top of the list for alternative venues, but there are rumours of other venues too. So there's also speculation that Dubai, Singapore, Valencia, Oman and Doha could also host the next cup. Cork in Ireland has also put its hand up and don't ignore China's claims either. And even if these venues don't take the America's Cup event itself, they may well be arm twisted into hosting a World Series event in the build up to the next America's Cup. Team New Zealand boss Grant Dalton also raised the prospect of Auckland hosting uh, one of these World Series events too. A modern America's Cup format could look to replicate the Grand Prix style format of Cell GP to keep the teams busy in a contest that suffers through its regular four year hiatus. This is a tool called Google Trends which tracks interest around certain topics over time. Uh, we can put in the time period 2004 to present. This is the number of people searching for the America's Cup. We're going to change this to worldwide and we see a huge spike pretty much every four years when the America's Cup takes place, but very little interest in the four year interim period. So potentially running a World Series more seriously than they have done before could retain the fan interest from one America's Cup to the next. However, GP are already doing this very successfully and I'm not sure the America's Cup should try and compete with that. There would ultimately be event clashes and the sailors would have to choose which event to attend, which would inevitably involve the splitting of top talent amongst the two events and ultimately making both events weaker as a result. Do you think the America's Cup should try and replicate CLGP? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. So back onto the topic for the potential locations for the next America's Cup. First up, we have Dubai, home of the Emirates Airline, Team New Zealand's title sponsor. The industry's COVID struggles have placed a question mark over Emirates' ongoing commitment to the Cup, but their name remains on the current Team New Zealand sponsorship, and hosting the event in Dubai would be a logical progression. I would say that would be the closest thing to keeping the America's Cup in New Zealand. Although it's not in New Zealand, 
it's not going to any of the direct competitors of Team New Zealand either. And we all know there is plenty of money in Saudi Arabia, which is exactly what Team New Zealand need. Next candidate we got here is Valencia. They hosted the very successful cup in 2007 when 11 challengers battled for the right to take on Swiss defender Alinghi. Now the advantage of hosting it in Valencia or perhaps any other European venue is the number of challenges you're likely to get. It's obviously a lot harder and more expensive to ship boats and teams across the world to New Zealand. Whereas as shown by the 2007 America's Cup, there are many European teams that would be willing to challenge if the event was cheaper and closer. This article suggests that the infrastructure from the last time it was hosted in Valencia uh, would need a makeover but could be reused thus making the cup cheaper and also the good sailing conditions would remain. Right, Singapore now, an international hub of business and travel with the ever-present ocean outlook and productive maritime scene. The America's Cup wants more Asian involvement and this venue would encourage that. I'm certainly a fan of the, of the America's Cup growing its fan base in new locations and that would hopefully be good for the long-term prospects of the America's Cup, thus encouraging more teams from more countries to participate. Next on the list is Cork. They've perhaps shown the most direct interest of any potential venue so far. A bit of a left-field addition, though the Royal Cork Yacht Club is a claimant to the title of the world's oldest yacht club, founded in 1720. There's cup history in Ireland too. Their last challenger was Sir Thomas Lipton's Shamrock Five representing the Royal Ulster Yacht Club that was beaten 4-0 by Harold Vinderbilt's American Defender Enterprise in 1930. Next up we have Jeddah. Human rights movements would be abhorred by the prospect but the wealthy Arab nation is aggressive in the elite international sporting market. They've been hosting Formula One and premier boxing matches. Money isn't an option and they make infrastructure happen in an instant. We also have Oman and Doha, both based in the Middle East and likely with a lot of cash behind them. So if you had to choose between those venues, which would you prefer for the next America's Cup? Now before we end the video, I just want to draw your attention to my website. You may or may not have come across it, but it's called Dinghy Racing Tips. It's specifically for dinghy sailors wanting to improve although all types of sailors I'm sure could get something from it. Lately I've been getting more articles from top sailors including Olympic laser gold medalist Paul Goodison, OK World Champion Nick Craig and 470 gold medalist Saskia Clark. So if you want to improve your sailing I highly recommend uh, checking it out. All the content is 100% free and I really appreciate your feedback on it. So if you have any recommendations, big or small, let me know. So I'm going to leave the video there. If you enjoyed it, leave a thumbs up below. And if you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing and turning on the notifications bell. And with that said, I hope to see you in the next video.